My name is Ronnie Cruz, and this is Path, Path of the Network Path Marketer. The Network All right, Marketer. welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to talk about three things that will help vastly improve your social media strategies. That's right. We're going to continue this conversation on social media. Yesterday, we talked about three reasons why your social media isn't working. Today, we're going to talk about three things that will help improve your social media. Okay, so before we get into all that, I want to remind you, like we did yesterday, um, uh, if you're not already part of our Facebook community, come join us. Lots more content on there that's not necessarily available here on the show. Um, also, it's a place where you can uh, get support, right? Like that's a whole reason for the community. That's my, my intention and my goal for that community is a place where we can support each other on our on our entrepreneurial journeys. Uh, so you can check it out, facebook.com slash groups slash path of the network marketer. Okay, so uh, the, the next thing is before jumping into the content of today's episode is I want to give a shout out and recognize a couple of individuals and shows um, that have inspired our episode here today. The first one is Brendan Burchard um, from his show Marketing with Brendan Burchard, a December 8th episode. Uh, the next individual is Jasmine Starr of the Jasmine Starr Show from November 22nd. Um, and then the last one is Jenna Kutcher. Jenna Kutcher, actually, I just recently went through her online, well, her training. She just did a training, a free training on Instagram. Um, now, uh, it's an amazing training. It's absolutely free. And of course, you can, like she offers um, the pay, a paid version that's more in depth and, and it's got a lot more meat and potatoes to it. But the free training is great on its own, right? There's so much value. And that's one of the reasons why I love Jenna. Like she gives so much value, whether it's free, whether it's paid. Um, there's all, you, you're always going to be able to get something from uh, from her content and from her trainings. And I just went through that training, that Instagram training, and I learned so much just from the free training. Um, so I'll, I'll leave a link to all of this stuff um, in the so show notes of this episode, um, you know, for Brendan, for uh, for Jasmine, and, and for Jenna's uh, free free Instagram training course. Okay. All right. So getting into getting into the meat and potatoes of, of the episode here for the topic, three things that you can implement immediately that will help vastly improve your social media strategy. Number one, clean up your bio slash profile. <laughs> all right. Seems like a no brainer, but I think we're all guilty of this. I know I'm guilty of this. Um, you know, I'm actually in the process of massively overhauling all my social media profiles and bios uh, because here's the thing. You can create some of the best content in the world and it's engaging. You're getting a lot of views. You're getting a lot of likes. Um, but if you look at your, your following and your audience, if it's not growing, then chances are it's because of your bio. Right. That, that's the first thing that people look at after they, 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 you know, they catch your amazing piece of content that you publish. They look at your bio. And if your bio doesn't communicate um, something that they'd be interested in, then then they're just going to keep scrolling and they're going to forget about you. And then you lose a potential audience member. You lose a potential follower. Um, so here's here's the tips that you can do to make that a better experience for people. Number one, put a profile pic that is of you, at least of a human being, and and generally, if we can see your face clearly, that works out a lot better, right? That works out a lot better. Uh, you know, one of my pet peeves over the years um, is that. Uh, I use social media primarily to connect with people, at least in the past, right? And and inevitably, like I would I would find somebody um, that's either commented or or you know we're having an interaction on the feed, and and I click on their profile, and I see a picture of their you know grandchild, or there's a picture on their profile. It's just their car, right? Like to me, it's like man, I don't want to connect with a car. I don't want to connect with a baby. As cool as those things are. Um, the, the, the point is, if, if, you're building, if you're using social media to build your business, it, it can't be about those personal things. If, if you're using you know, social media for your personal life and staying connected with you know, your friends and family who happen to live across the country, that's fine. But we're talking about using social media for your business. And so your profile pic has to be a human and it should be you. Right, it should be your face. Um, again, I'm super guilty of this, uh, <laughs> and even though it's one one of my pet, pet peeves, uh, I, my TikTok profile pic right now is of my dog, so I have to change it. Again, I'm working on it, guys. I, I'm a I'm a work in progress, so um, vastly, vastly trying to trying to improve my social media presence. All right, so the other thing you can do then, of course, is create a bio that's more succinct. And that's more accurate to, to who you are and what you do, right? You want to be really, really specific about what you do so that when people click on your profile, 
they know exactly what you're offering and that way they can select themselves into being part of your audience right again if it just says long walks on the beach and and red wines on thursdays that that doesn't communicate anything right that doesn't communicate anything as far as what you're offering and so like eh, okay that's all they do this is just a this is just a, a you know a personal profile where they're sharing their life i'm not necessarily going to follow it because that, that has has no value to my feed adds no value to my feed so get really really uh, specific about what you do in your bio. Um, again, this is this is kind of that gateway. One of the first gateways that that people get to, and, and if it's not honed in, if it's not refined, then it's actually going to be a closed gate, right? You want to be a open as open a gate as possible so that people can select themselves into being part of your audience. Okay, so number two, pick a publishing schedule that works for you. Right. And, and this is really, you know, this speaks to, again, um, it's shifting that mindset from using social media as a personal account to to communicate and stay in contact with friends and family um, to using social media as a way to grow your business. Right. You really have to be methodical. You really have to create a structure for your publishing. And if you can, I encourage you to publish something every day. Right. There's there's a vast ocean of of content that's being published every day. And, and if you're not publishing with with a with a level of frequency that's going to allow you to make a splash you're going to have a really hard time and it's 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 going to be a really slow growth uh, curve for you on social media I, I understand if you're busy and if you can't manage every day, but at the very least, you have to be consistent with your structure. So creating the structure is very, very important. Um, you know, if it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, make, make it Monday, Wednesday, Friday for five years, right? Like make it non-negotiable. Do not do not uh, stray from that, right? It's got to be consistent. It's got to be um, it's got to be regular. So that way your audience can expect it and will continue to follow. Um Beyond that, as far as structure is setting aside a time to actually create that content, right? Like this, uh, I know, like for me, uh, I, I have a pretty different situation than most people. Uh, you know, like this can, this is pretty much all I do right now, <laughs> right? Because I don't have a day job. Um, I understand that that's not the case for a lot of you listening. So you have to find that time in your day that you can dedicate to your social media. And I actually tell this to anybody that joins my team as a network marketer. Um, when you join network marketing, you have to set aside time for your business, right? Um, because most people that come into network marketing already have, you know, a nine to five or really a eight to six. And then they have family obligations, they have kids, they have all kinds of things going on in their lives. And so if you don't set aside, set aside a time in your day, uh, specifically just for your network marketing business, then you're never going to get anything done, right? So set aside that time in your day for your network marketing business, and then split some of that time to your social media, right? If you have an hour a day, um, uh, you know, during the, the work week for your network marketing business, do do a half hour for social media, half hour of that hour for social media, right? Whatever it might be. But again, you got to figure out that structure for you um, so that you can stay consistent and, and that you can uh, 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 publish at a, at a frequent rate, right? Okay, so that's number two. Number one, provide value. Simple as that. Again, it's that mindset shift uh, moving from um, using socials for personal use and staying in contact with friends and family to, to using it to grow your business, right? You got to provide value. You got to give reason to tune in, number one, and to stay plugged in, number two. Now, you might be asking, okay, so what kind of value should I should I post? Well, you know, you, you just present uh, the stuff that you know, right? Like you, uh, I would wager to say you have some level of, of knowledge and expertise on the particular products or services that your company has to offer, right? Like that's what makes you an independent distributor for that company. Um, and and so yeah, just share that, right? Just share some of that stuff. Share what it's done for you. Like I think I talked about that in the last episode. Share what uh, what the products and services of your company has has done for you. How how it's changed and improved your life, your family's lives, the impact that it's made, right, in your community, whatever, um, whatever the situation. But you can share this thing, and that can be of value um, to you, uh, to, uh, to your audience. Now, you might be asking, well, what if I'm brand new, right? Like, what if I don't know that much? Here's the thing. You do, and and you you know a lot more than you're giving yourself credit for, and and this is why I I referenced Jasmine Star earlier because she said in that episode, um, she gave a really great perspective on you know feeling that you're not necessarily an expert yet on 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 whatever on whatever it is that you're you're sharing, and therefore you have no value on the social feeds. Jasmine illustrated it this way. Think about it as in terms of when you're when you're creating content, when you're publishing online and social media. Um, talk to 
a version of you from 12 months ago. Because chances are, especially if you're an entrepreneur, if you're building a business, where you are today is different than where you were 12 months ago. I, I would wager to say that you've learned a lot since, uh, since 12 months ago, right? You've learned a lot in the last 12 months. So if you, if you just picture the content, um, as you're creating your content, if you picture that you're talking to that 12-month-ago version of you, um, then you, you will know things now and you'll be able to share things that you know now that you didn't know from 12 months ago. Um, another example is like for me, I mean, just on this 100-day journey, right? Um, the, the, the 100 days of podcasting, uh, I know a lot more now than when I, when I started uh, from day one. So I can share things that I know today that I didn't know um, when I when I was recording day one, right? So think about it in that way, and then and then realize that you know wherever you were twelve months ago, there are people that were in that that are that are in that same position. So you have value to bring uh, to the table. You have an expertise and, and authority to bring to the table. You're just not giving yourself enough credit for that. Um, so shift that mindset from using social media f- uh, for personal use and just sharing what you're doing uh, at this moment. I mean that can be part of it too, right? Like share share. Share whatever you're comfortable sharing about your life and and the things that that you're experiencing, but also you know share it in a way that provides value to your to your followers, right? Give them something um, that will give them reasons to continue to engage with your with your content. And really, when you think about it from a value standpoint, I mean, I talked about value ladder already, right? Um, when you think about it from a value ladder standpoint, that's really what's going to help you grow your business um, and improve your social media strategies, improve your engagement, improve your following. So those are the three things. Number one, clean up your bio slash profile. Number two, uh, pick a publishing schedule that works for you. Create a structure that works for you. And number three, um, uh, provide value. Continue to provide value as much as you can on your social feeds and you'll be able to grow your following, engage with your audience, and it's going to translate to more growth for your network marketing business. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you tomorrow with a fresh new episode. Until then, be well, be safe. We'll see you in the next episode.